It's Sunday morning. What's going on in our world today? Now, we have a caravan of 10,000 immigrants, refugees, whatever you want to call them, headed for the United States border. Who are they? What's happening? With us this morning is Dr. Sebastian Gorka. Good morning, Dr. Gorka. How are you? Good Good morning, John. Thanks for having me. I'm well. Uh, tell uh, the American public, who are these people? Why are they coming towards our border? Well, uh, you need to ignore the majority of the coverage out there from people who are sitting in their studios in New York or uh, elsewhere and talk to people who've actually visited the caravan, spoken to its members, and also uh, the security services of the region. And foremost among them is my colleague, Sarah Carter at Fox News, who speaks, is fluent in Spanish, went down there, filmed the members of the caravan, interviewed them. And uh, the majority, 90%, are what we call military-age males, these are individuals who are clearly not political asylum seekers, but economic immigrants. And as I posted on my Twitter feed, you can, you can follow me, at Seb Gorka, S-E-B-G-O-R-K-A. Uh, the Department of Homeland Security issued its own statement just this week that they know of at least 270 criminals, known criminals, in the first caravan. That's the, the ones that we know of. And since then, we know that multiple caravans have been initiated and are heading towards our border. I mean, that's clearly an invasion. And I, I don't understand, Sebastian. Uh, you know, I'm an immigrant, and I've always said I am pro-immigration. But we should know who's coming and going. Why are some of the American people, why is some of the Democratic uh, constituency saying that we should just let them in? I don't understand that. Do you understand it at all? Well, look, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a legal immigrant myself. I chose this country. I believe it to be the greatest country, the greatest nation on God's earth. Uh, why are people supporting unfettered access to America? It's very simple. It's philosophy. It's ideology. Don't forget that Hillary Clinton, who was the Democrat candidate for President Trump, in a private speech to bankers, the transcript, the transcript of which was leaked to uh, the, the press. You can read all the details in, in my new book, Why We Fight. Hillary Clinton said her vision was to see a borderless hemisphere. That means no borders from Canada down to South America, at which point America would cease to exist. This is the, the globalizing vision of the elite uh, that are typified by people such as Hillary Clinton. Think about the fact that we have uh, members of the Senate, Democrats. We have people who ran for office in the recent midterms whose goal, they said, was to disband ICE, disband the federal law enforcement agency that ke keeps you, me, our families safe, from the drug runners, from MS-13, from the human traffickers. It, it is a vision that sees America as the problem and wishes to see America undermined. Well, they did this in Europe, uh, yeah. and, and Angela Merkel is about to resign or leave office because the German people were invaded to the uh, to a great deal by the Muslim population. And I have nothing against Muslims, but, you know, I have a philosophy. Germany's for Germany, Italy's for Italians, Greece is for Greece, uh, Spain is for Spain, and England is for England. And I believe the reason that England went Brexit is because they didn't want to be invaded anymore. What do you think, uh, Sebastian? Oh, I, I'm absolutely certain of the fact that the unfettered immigration uh, into the UK uh, as a result of the Maastricht Treaty of the European Union was the key element for the Brexit vote. But don't forget, and I, you know, I make this point wherever I speak, I, I think I even make it in Why We Fight. When you have, when you encourage illegal migration, who gets hurt the most? It's not you, John. It's not me. We'll be fine. The people who get hurt the most are the recent legal immigrants to the United States or whichever country who are at the bottom of the wage-earning scale. And when they're doing some manual labor, labor, 
and somebody comes in and says, hey, I'll do that job for cash for 50%, just pay me under the table, guess who loses their job? It's the recent immigrants. So uh, even, even if you, you define your policies based upon uh, compassion and not necessarily logic, then the compassionate thing is to build the wall and stop the illegal migration. I mean, do the American people, do the Democrats realize that uh, America should be for America? And we believe in immigration, but we have to control who's coming and going. We don't want, I mean, I live in Long Island on weekends. We don't want any more MS-13 people that invaded right. Long Island. Right. L L L the idea, and I've spoken to local law enforcement, that Long Island has become a hub of MS-13 activity is incredible. And so there's a reason. I, I didn't come up with it. I, you know, regularly my publisher came up with it. My, my book subtitle. So the book is Why We Fight Defeating America's Enemies with No Apologies. John, that's what we lived under for eight years. Think about it. The 44th president of the United States traveled the world apologizing for America. That's the root of this philosophy. If, if you think that America is a problem, then you want to dilute America. And unfettered immigration is, they think, the best way to dilute America and everything it stands for. And I, I'll tell you the truth, Sebastian. Uh, uh, I am horrified at the fact that uh, uh, we're going to lose our borders and, and the Democrats uh, in the Democratic Party are advocating it. And is there any common sense uh, in, in the Democratic Party? I mean, I know... Chuck Schumer, Senator Schumer, a long time, and he always had common sense. What's going on in the Democratic Party? Uh, uh, the, the, the lunatics have taken over the asylum. I mean, this is the trouble. Back in the 1990s, I, I'm no fan of, of Bill Clinton, but Bill Clinton and his ilk would at least rein in the loonies. Where, when you've got Kamala Harris comparing uh, DHS and ICE to the KKK, which is absolutely disgusting. That's what she did yesterday. When you've got uh, Ocasio-Cortez, who's publicly calling for a socialist revolution, not only win her primary, but become uh, you know, a member of Congress in the midterms, you understand that the, the, the Democrat Party has been taken over by radicals. John, today, a, a hardcore pro-national security politician like John F. Kennedy would not be allowed into the Democrat Party. That's how bad. And I was a fan of I was a fan of Bill Clinton himself. I thought he was a common sense centrist versus some of the loonies uh, that exist today. I mean, uh, but um, I guess, look, the American people have to decide, is this our yep. America or do we want to have America invaded? Uh, which is uh, lunacy. Uh, tell us about your book before we sign off, uh, uh, Sebastian. Yeah, so it's my second book. First one was Defeating Jihad, New York Times bestseller, and now I've opened the aperture. I'm talking about all the threats America faces and what Donald Trump is doing to defeat them. It's called Why We Fight, Defeating America's Enemies with No Apologies. And in between the strategic analysis uh, and the uh, recommendations for how we're going to cope with threats like China, Russia, North Korea, and Iran, I have uh, stories of incredible American heroes who gave their all, from Stephen Decatur during the Barbary Wars 200 years ago, through Chesley Puller, Marine Corps legend, turned around the war in the Pacific almost single-handedly. Then uh, Eugene Red McDaniel shot down over Vietnam, spent six and a half years in the Hanoi Hilton, never lost his faith in God, never lost his faith in America. And then, because so many millennials are unaware of his story, I, I recount the tale of Whitaker Chambers, the man who stood up for the truth and was lambasted like uh, the Judge Kavanaugh was, but a man who never gave up. So why we fight analysis of the threats we face, what we, what we need to do about them, and stories of some amazing heroes. Uh, Dr. Sebastian Gorka, thank you so much. Uh, and your book is available on uh, Amazon and Barnes & Noble. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, Amazon.com, Barnes & Noble. I, I read the uh, audio book. You can get it Audible or iTunes. And anyway, good books are sold. Just uh, look up uh, Why We Fight. Dr. Gorka, thank you so much. And thank you for everything you do for America. And you too as an immigrant and me as an immigrant, I think we're fighting hard. Uh, for uh, America ourselves, and uh, God bless you. Thank you, John. God bless you. Have a wonderful Sunday. Thank you.